Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to make some delicious meatloaf. You're going to start by preheating your oven to 350 degrees. And then what I'm doing here is just chopping up three celery ribs. I'm gonna make them a little bit finer. So I continue to chop it. After you get these to the desired side, oh Lord, you know, desired size, you want to set them to the side so then you can chop the next ingredient. So I have not reached my desired size yet. I still see a few big ones that I want to just tackle. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So, I will sit these to the side, and then we'll go on to the next phase. Wait, I see another one. Sorry, y'all. Okay. So, that's how mine's looking right now. Actually, there's an easier way. I don't know what I'm doing. Trip it. I just want to get all the onion. No onion left behind. Oh, these onions strong. Eyes is watering up for real. So I had a large onion and I think this is enough for what I'm looking to accomplish. So I'm gonna probably stop right here. I'm not gonna cut this part. I'm gonna save it. Cause I think this is plenty onion. But if you wanna use the whole onion, go right ahead. Use as much as you want. Show stuff and you gotta eat it. So I'm just saying for me, this is enough. <laughs> Ooh, this thing got my eyes going. But that's good. I like the onions a little bit. It's 
spicy. Okay, so this is how my onion is looking, okay? Okay, what I have next is just a little piece of garlic and mince it, chop it, whatever you want to do with it. I'm just going to chop it a little bit. I don't feel like doing anything extra. I'm just going to do it like so. Okay. Okay. Some paprika. garlic powder season of salt ginger and parsley If you would like the exact measurements or what have you of what I'm doing, um, leave a comment and then I will add that. I hope y'all can see this. Okay. And then I'm going to add in the celery that I chopped. And now the garlic and onions. And then I'm gonna just mix it all together really well, combine everything. Just a big piece of onion, let me get that out of there. And once you feel like this is incorporated really good, then we will do the next step, which, hang on, let me just mix just a little more. Okay, and then the next step will be in a separate, hang on, here we go. Here we go. So I have two eggs that are slightly beaten that I'm gonna pour in. And then I'm going to incorporate that. Incorporate really well, guys. that's done you can use any amount you'd like but I say for me anywhere for a half a pack to a whole pack today I'm just using saltines you would do is crumble them up and then add them in. You can kind of see how much you'd like to add as you go. This 
this is just to help it with the eggs combine the whole thing so between the eggs and the onions um, it'll help it to stay moist and hold together and the crackers I apologize I meant to say crackers So far, I've used about almost a half a cup there, so we're going to do just a little more. And this is about my desired um, texture, I'll say. So it's firm, it's holding, see that? And I apologize about the lighting, I hope you guys can see, but see it's holding. Okay, so, then you want to have uh, whatever pan you're going to use. For me, I'm going to be using a loaf pan which is just this one here. I'm gonna spray it. And then begin to take the meat, put it in. I like using a loaf pan because then you don't have to do all the shaping and stuff with your hands. I mean, it's okay to do it that way, but this is just a little bit easier. It's all about preference, I would say. So I'm gonna pat this down. And then if you were going to, cause sometimes I like to put different things, you know, within the meatloaf. So if you were gonna do that, I would suggest kind of doing it at this point, cause this is the halfway point, I guess. And then take, I'm not doing that today. It's just a suggestion. Um, and then I'm taking the remainder of my meat and placing it on and pushing it in. So then I'm just going to grab a towel and then I have a towel. And I like to kind of wipe the outside. So this is our right before the oven. That's how it looks. Ooh. It smells pretty good too with everything combined. So you would put it in the oven on um, the 350 that you have it preheated on, uncovered for about 55 minutes. You want the internal temperature to reach 160 degrees Fahrenheit. And be sure to let the meatloaf rest for about 10 minutes before attempting to slice so that it will hold its shape. I will be back when this is done. So it's now been 55 minutes and um, sorry, I was throwing the can opener in the drawer. Um, and this is done. It looks delish. Look at that. It's nice and juicy. You can see. Um, and what I have, I mean, you can leave it like this, but I have some red sauce, which is just my version of the red sauce. And then um, what I did was, because 
I believe this ground beef was like 73% lean. So it had like a little bit of uh, juice, which was like a little oil or whatever. So um, I drained it out. But what I did was before I discarded it, I actually incorporated it into my red sauce. Let me see if I can show you. So this is my red sauce. Let's see. Ooh, I don't want to spill it. But this is how it's looking. So I incorporated that juice into, well, some of it. I didn't use all of it. I used some of it. And I left my oven on the 350 because what I'm going to do is add this red sauce and then put it back in the oven for another, I'd say, 10 to 15 minutes. And actually, it's probably, depending on if you want your red sauce to be this consistency or, um, you know, to, what am I trying to say? Like kind of sear into the meat or whatever. Um, I think I'm gonna actually adjust, <clears throat> excuse me, the oven to broil. So then, um, I'll give it probably like, uh, probably like five minutes with the broiler on to let it um, do its thing. Let me switch to broil. And Smells so delicious. Just add all of it in there, and it can spill over to the sides. It's okay with me because it'll just be extra sauce for other pieces. Turn this to the oven for about five minutes, okay? And then I'll be back to show you my final result. So when I took it out from broiling, I added parsley, fresh parsley on the top. Then I did not wait for it to cool before I fully cut it and took a piece out. That's okay. So if you don't want it to tear at all, you should wait. I didn't do that. But I put some on a plate for me to try. Mmm. Yes. It's moist, it's tender, and it's juicy. Here, you guys can get a bite right there. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and dig in. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Here you go. You can get a bite before you leave. But be sure to like, comment, and share. And also hit that bell notification if you have not already. What you waiting for? Go ahead and hit the bell. And once you hit subscribe and the bell comes up, press the top one so you can get a notification every time I post. Thank you and God bless.